Good evening from Hawthorne, California. It is December 22nd, just after 5.12 p.m. Pacific Time. Welcome to the webcast of the Falcon 9 mission, carrying the fourth flight of 10 Iridium Next satellites. You're seeing the live view of Falcon 9 as we prepare for launch in just over 10 minutes, sunset just having occurred here on the west coast of the United States. Launch is scheduled for one hour, 27 minutes, 34 seconds universal time, or 5.27.34 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm John Innsbrucker, Falcon 9 Principal Integration Engineer, and I will be bringing you coverage of the SpaceX launch for Iridium Next during today's webcast. Now this is our fourth of eight planned launches for Iridium. It's also our fourth Iridium flight in 2017. We started in January with Iridium 1, and we're wrapping up 2017 with Iridium 4. We're at T-minus 12 minutes, 48 seconds, counting down. As you just saw from the video tour, we're launching from historic Space Launch Complex 4 at Vandenberg Air Force Base, where I worked for several years while I was in the Air Force. Slick 4, as it's called, is SpaceX's West Coast launch site. On the launch pad, you can see the two-stage Falcon 9 vehicle. It stands just over 70 meters tall. That's taller than a 20-story building. It's in the darkness just after sunset. Now the first stage provides the initial force to get out of the majority of the Earth's atmosphere. The first stage in the close-ups is the stage that has the SpaceX logo on it. For that first stage, this will be its second flight, the first having been on the Iridium-2 mission earlier this summer. Now what you may have noticed in our camera views is the first stage does not have landing legs for this flight, although grid fins are installed. SpaceX does not plan to recover this first stage. A landing sequence out in the Pacific Ocean will be performed, but there is no drone ship in position for recovery. SpaceX will not be following the first stage during the webcast, although you may hear callouts on the countdown net while we are following the second stage as it goes into orbit. Also of note, you may notice the inner stage looks slightly dark, sooty from the last flight, and it is. There was no need after it was recovered to totally clean and repaint that inner stage. Now on top of the first stage is the second stage. That will take the satellite from the stage separation altitude of just over 70 kilometers at the edge of space and accelerate it up to the orbital speed of just over seven and a half kilometers per second, or about 17,500 miles per hour, 10 times faster than a bullet. Finally there in the view, you can see with the Iridium Next logo at the very top, the 17 foot diameter payload fairing inside of which are 10 Iridium satellites. And then finally, the large white structure next to the rocket is our transporter rector. As a reminder, unlike the East Coast, here on the West Coast, the transporter rector will move away starting at about T minus five minutes to a position 70, 77 and a half degrees away from the rocket just before T zero. T minus 10 minutes, we're counting down. Launch again planned at 27 minutes, 34 seconds after the hour. Currently on the Falcon 9, the good news is the SpaceX team is working no significant issues. We began loading fuel into the first stage on time at T minus 70 minutes. Fuel is now essentially loaded on the first stage. We'll top it off with just a little bit from about T minus seven minutes to T minus six minutes, and that'll finish the first stage fuel. 
We are loading liquid oxygen onto both stages. Stage one is about 80 some percent complete. Stage two is a little more than half full. That liquid oxygen loading will continue up until the last minutes of the countdown. First stage completing at about T minus three minutes. Second stage locks loading will complete about T minus two minutes. You should hear those countdowns over the countdown net as we listen to the last minutes. Now right now the next major activity planned is in two minutes at T minus seven. That'll be the opening of the pre-valves between the first stage propellant tanks and the nine Merlin 1D engines at the bottom of the first stage. That'll allow liquid oxygen to bleed through the turbo pumps, begin chilling them down to prepare them for the ignition that it comes just a couple seconds before T0. On top of the Falcon 9, shown within again, the, set, the, the payload fairing with the Iridium Next logo on it are the 10 Iridium satellites. The Iridium team working no issues. They have gone to internal power and they are ready for launch. Today for the range, we're operating out of Vandenberg, the head of the Western range. Everything looks good from the Air Force. Support is in place, ready for an on-time launch. And then finally, the weather. The good news is we don't have to do anything about the weather. The Air Force weather officer has given us a 0% probability of violating conditions. Upper altitude jet stream looks like it's in control. Ground level winds, as you can see, are very light. We're hardly blowing any of the mist away from the rocket. The cold moisture condensing from the chill of the liquid oxygen in the stages. So at 7 minutes 54 seconds, everything is looking good. Now today, SpaceX is launching 10 Iridium Next satellites to LEO, that's short for Low Earth Orbit. Now each of the 10 satellites has a mass of about 600 kilograms, and it's got solar rays that are currently folded up alongside each satellite. Once they're in space, the solar rays will fully deploy, and the Iridium Next satellite will have a wingspan of approximately nine meters in length. Now in order to correctly position the satellites into the right orbital plane, that means we have to launch right on time today. Our launch window is one second long. Now if you hear the dreaded hold, hold, hold in the countdown, that means we're gonna have to recycle and try again another day. There is a backup opportunity tomorrow, about six minutes later. Finally, when the second stage gets into the final orbit later this evening, we'll be at 625 kilometers altitude. From there, we'll release the 10 Iridium satellites. They will make the maneuvers to their final orbits. Now that event sequence will last 15 minutes and we're going to hope to bring that to you using a camera on the second stage later on. But for now, we've got Matt Desch with some of the unique features of the Iridium system. When we were envisioning Iridium Next, a whole constellation of 66 new satellites going around the Earth to replace our network, we realized what an incredible real estate this is. This is really, really important real estate to be so close to the Earth with a network all interconnected in space. What if other sensors could be put on our satellites? What if other things that really wanted to see the Earth as a complete entity could also be on the satellite with us? We decided to put a payload about this big to monitor aircraft. And it operates completely independently of our communication system. It doesn't use the same radio frequencies or anything, but what it's doing, it's listening for the transmissions of every aircraft in the world, all of whom are broadcast at a very specific frequency in a very specific language called ADSB. Their identity, their location, their speed, their position, their altitude, and while ground towers typically pick up those receptions, we knew that we were so close to the Earth and with an interconnected satellite system, we could hear those transmissions and relay them in real time to an air traffic controller. 
and that would allow airplanes to fly much more efficiently point to point. They'd be able to climb faster. They'd be able to fly in places where there was no radar coverage today, but fly just as safely and as efficiently as they do when they were in radar coverage. Every one of our new satellites has one of these receivers on them. In fact, they're processing billions of messages a day already from airplanes. And when the full network is complete, that is gonna provide a 100% picture of the real-time location of every airplane on the planet. And it's exciting because we've created this whole new business that isn't even related to our core communication competency by using this hosted payload, as it's called. We also had the company that created this payload put a few other things in there, including the ability to monitor all ships in real time. And that's quite exciting. Today, we pick up large ships as they're traveling around the world, they can be out of touch and out of reach. And so for the first time ever, there'll be a 100% picture of every ship in the ocean, picking up the unique frequencies transmitted by every ship as it's trying to send out uh, its information to nearby ships. But we'll pick it up as we pass overhead and relay that to the agencies, the Coast Guards, the maritime organizations that really want to know in real time where every large ship is traveling in the world for safety and security. And that's exciting. It's a whole new business that just rides along with our communication payload and really creates a whole new technical innovation, a whole new business around our business that expands the power and potential of this unique global constellation of satellites. T-minus two minutes, 40 seconds, continuing to count down for a launch. Everything looks good. While we're watching that video, the team has moved the Strongback away from the Falcon 9. We've done thrust vector control checkouts on the upper stage engine. We've done alignment of the guidance system. We've completed fuel loading on first and second stage, and we have just ended locks loading on stage one. So we're down to loading locks on stage two, then we'll go into the final countdown sequence starting at T-minus one minute. Now one note coming up at about 90 seconds, if you see and hear a large venting off of the strongback, that's normal. We'll be draining liquid oxygen out of the structure alongside of the rocket, and sometimes that'll condense a lot of the moisture in the air at Vandenberg into a cloud. But for that, Iridium is go. The range has just announced they're green. The weather is go. So we're going to listen in to the last minute and 45 of the countdown of Falcon 9 with Iridium next. Vehicles in South Line. Vehicle gas closeouts have started. AFTS is ready for launch. Falcon 9's in startup. Stage 2 tanks pressing for flight. LD is go for launch. Minus 30 seconds. Twenty. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. Fifteen. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Lift off. Up nine. Vehicles cleared to nine. They don't propulsion. The 
moving to 3 down 170. plus a minute 10 in the flight. We've just gone through throttle down and throttle back up of the Falcon 9 first stage engines. We've gone through max Q on the first stage. First stage continues to look good on the engines, headed downrange away from Vandenberg Air Force Base. We're chilling in the MVAC engine two minutes into flight, getting it ready for ignition. Next major event coming up in 30 seconds is shutdown of the nine first stage engines, followed by stage separation and ignition of the second stage engine. Shortly after that, we hope to get a view of payload fairing separation from the second stage. We've had successful separation and ignition of the upper stage engine. First words from propulsion, things look good on the upper stage engine and the second stage. Boost Next up we should down. see fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. You hear the applause from the team gathered around Mission Control Center here in Hawthorne. It's 5.30 in the evening, second shift is in. They're watching the flight. Fairing separation looked very good, exposing the 10 Iridium Next satellites to the vacuum of outer space. We're three and a half minutes plus into flight. Second stage performance continues to look excellent. T plus four minutes into flight. Falcon 9 second stage continues to perform nominally. Power on the engine looks good. Avionics looks good. Guidance looks we're on track, headed south away from California, eventually overflying the South Polar Cap on our way off of Eastern Africa, where we'll eventually deploy later in the webcast the 10 Iridium Next satellites. T plus five minutes into flight, you can see the camera views looking back on the nozzle of the MVAC-D Merlin vacuum engine. Red hot, which is just what we expect at this stage of flight. The engine is at full power, continuing to perform normally, as I like to say. And meanwhile, the second stage is on trajectory, headed for its initial low Earth parking orbit. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but for now, 
everything continues to look good. Two plus six minutes into flight. Falcon 9, second stage carrying 10 Iridium Next satellites is currently west and south of the tip of Baja, California. I hope that everybody in Southern California had a great view of the launch this evening. We've had clear skies, the rocket launching about half an hour after sunset. Now currently we're in burn one. This takes us into the low earth parking orbit. That's a temporary orbit that we'll be in for about half an orbit around the earth before we relight the upper stage engine, and that will move us with its second burn into the final orbit. We'll be bringing you that second burn later on in the webcast. Stage one entry startup. Stage one entry burn. Entry shut down. Stage one, AFTS has seven and a half minutes into flight. Falcon 9 second stage to, continues to perform well. We are continuing on the desired trajectory, headed south from Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, heading into a, an approximate polar orbit with the Iridium Next satellites. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to have two burns. We're in the first burn right now. This is the long burn, just well, over six minutes. Expected. We're beginning to throttle down power on the upper stage engine, preparing, preparing for shutdown about a minute stage from now. Meanwhile, we'll then go into a coast period of 42 minutes between the end of the burn that we're on now and then the relight that'll come over the eastern hemisphere. So during that coast phase, we're going to pause live commentary. We'll have a map so that you can see our path as we go over the southern polar regions en route stage to going eight, east eight, of eight. Africa. We've heard the call out, stage two flight termination system has safe in preparation for going into orbit. Once we go into orbit, we'll wait to hear a call from the guidance nav and control engineer called GNC on the quality of that orbit. And we've had good shutdown of the second stage engine. Now we're waiting to hear and take a look at the orbit. Nominal orbit insertion. And we've heard the call out, a good nominal orbit insertion. All right, stage one has So down. currently the first stage mission has completed. We separated the second stage, it took over, did a burn lasting just over six minutes. We've had shutdown on that first burn of the second stage engine. We're in a good orbit. We're gonna go into a coast phase now followed by a relight of the upper stage engine. So we're gonna stop live commentary right now. I'll get ready for coming back on at T plus 51 minutes, about 41 minutes from now. So with that, we'll leave you with a map of the progress of Falcon 9, still with the 10 Iridium Next satellites made it to the payload dispenser, and we'll be back to watch the second burn and then the eventual release of the 10 satellites.
control. Loss of signal expected.
welcome back to the commentary for today's Falcon 9 flight of the Iridium 4 mission. On the screen, you can see the MVAC D engine chilling in right now, getting ready for ignition coming up in less than a minute from now. Now, this is going to be a short relight of the upper stage engine. It's going to last about four seconds. That'll be just enough to raise us into a circular 625 kilometer orbit. Now, currently, we're using cold nitrogen gas out of a couple of settling thrusters at the bottom of the second stage to make sure that we have got the second stage pushed up against the fuel so that we have liquid in the inlets to the turbo pumps so that when they start, they immediately start pulling propellant. So we're gonna listen in right now for ignition of the upper stage engine. That'll run about four seconds. Then hopefully we'll hear the GNC engineer confirm a good orbit. We've had ignition on time of the upper stage engine and a good shutdown. And there it is in the background, Avionics GNC reports a nominal orbit insertion. So that takes us through the second of the two planned firings of the upper stage engine. Now there's about a five minute wait right now before we begin the deploy sequence of the first of the 10 Iridium satellites. Now we'll bring you that deployment. That'll take about 15 minutes to go from start to finish. So right now we're going to pause commentary while we wait for the five minutes to elapse, but then we'll come back and talk our way through the deployment of the 10 Iridium Next satellites. Now as one reminder coming up, we are contacted with the Mauritius ground station right now. That's where our telemetry is coming from. We're over uh, east of Africa, as you can see on the map right here. We'll be proceeding northward towards the Arabian Peninsula. And as we go along to the north, we will be handing off between several ground stations. And if you've watched us before, sometimes one of the Iridium satellites gets deployed right when we don't have telemetry, when we're doing what we call a handoff from one ground station to the next ground station. So if that happens, we may be a little late in confirming a satellite separation. But we're hoping to bring you possibly nine, maybe even all 10 of the deployments coming up. But for now, we'll be back in about four and a half minutes to start the deployment sequence.
Stage cap one. Welcome back. Confirmed. And we have separation of the first Iridium satellite. You can see it at the bottom left of the screen drifting away. An on time separation. Now every 100 seconds we'll begin a sequence where satellite two, three, four, and continuing on will deploy. So one down, nine to go, and we'll be back at time for the next deployment. Fifty-eight minutes, forty-three Lost seconds HPK. in the flight. We're getting ready for the second deployment. This one may be visible from the very top of the screen. We have deployment. The second of the ten Iridium satellites successfully deployed, drifting away from the Falcon 9 second stage. Now, just for your information, we have 10 Iridium Next satellites that we launched with. They are stacked in two layers of five. So the first five satellites that we are deploying are coming off of the top stack. We can see a couple others are going to be hidden by other satellites or out of view of the camera. Then when we go to satellite six through 10, those will be coming off of the lower stack. And so we'll get a couple of close-up views of the, cam of the satellites that are closest to the camera. Meanwhile, we're switching back and forth on orbit between the cameras looking at the nozzle on the upper stage, the map that we've got showing you where the Falcon 9 and the Iridium satellites are, and then the view as right now, the payload camera looking forward at the Iridium satellites. So currently we're about 40 seconds away from the deployment of the third satellite. Now this satellite will not be in view, so we'll only hear confirmation via telemetry. Coming up, we're about 10 seconds to deployment. Now it looks like we may have lost telemetry coverage as we expected for the deployment Mauritius of the third satellite. Expected. We've heard the call out, loss of signal from the Mauritius ground station as expected. So we'll just stay here for a minute while we wait for the Falcon 9 telemetry to be acquired by the next ground station, which I believe is Dubai, and then we'll get indication on whether or not the third satellite has deployed. Dubai acquisition signal. Spacecraft 2 separation confirmed. We have reacquired telemetry from the Falcon 9 over the Dubai ground station. And as you just heard, they said spacecraft 2 separation confirmed. That's actually the third satellite. In some of the numbering schemes, we count from 0 to 9. So in this case, satellite the third one planned to deploy did go at the correct time. We now have confirmation through telemetry. 
the next separation coming up right now. A nice view coming off of the side of the payload dispenser that's mounted on top of the Falcon 9 second stage. Spacecraft 5 separation confirmed. T plus one hour, three minutes and 12 seconds into flight. We're about 40 seconds away, a little less than that, from the deployment of the fifth satellite. Now looking at the uh, notes, this one will not be in view of the camera, so we should just get telemetry confirmation from the avionics engineering team monitoring it from the control center. In the forward-looking view of the payload camera, you can see the fourth, sat or the fourth satellite drifting away still, that white image just to the left, and we're about ready. Spacecraft 3, separation confirmed. And we have confirmed the fifth of the 10 Iridium Next satellites has deployed. However, this one was not in the field of view. We've got a view looking forward again. Satellite 6 preparing for deploy. This should be from the bottom of the screen, so you might see a little bit of motion as it moves away. Spacecraft 6, separation. And there it goes into the sunlight over the eastern hemisphere as we're passing over the Arabian Peninsula. Six satellites down. There are four still to go in this 15-minute deployment sequence. A view again, looking forward, a minute, actually about 30 seconds away from separation of the next Iridium satellite. The view of the MVAC-D engine right now, you see that white fluffy uh, item in the foreground? That's actually, as we point out before, solid oxygen. A little bit of the liquid oxygen pump discharge goes overboard and freezes. So that's the oxygen you breathe, except it's actually frozen solid. Although it's actually very light and fluffy, so it doesn't do any harm when it eventually gets jostled off of the tube. We're about 15 seconds out. We now switch back forward to the view to look at separation of Satellite 7, which I believe we will see coming from the top of the screen. 
Spacecraft 9, separation confirmed. So the seventh satellite deployed, also you may have heard it called Spacecraft 9. That's a numbering scheme that doesn't indicate that was the ninth of 10. Uh, we're through seven with three more to go. Camera views have now switched forward again for satellite number eight. This one's on the back side of the dispenser, so we won't see it coming free from the Falcon 9. Spacecraft seven, separation confirmed. There's the confirmation. The eighth of 10 satellites has successfully separated from Falcon 9. There are two more to go. The next one up will be the satellite that you see currently on the payload camera. So we'll get a good close up of that one separating the tenth satellite then is on the back side of the dispenser, and we'll only hear from telemetry that it's separated, but we won't see that one. Camera again has now switched according to the timeline. We're looking at satellite number nine preparing for deploy coming up in less than 10 seconds. Spacecraft 10 separation confirmed. And a great view from the payload camera watching the ninth of 10 satellites deploy. You can see in the background as we saw in the last flight, several bright dots. Those are earlier Iridium satellites that were deployed minutes ago, forming that long chain of satellites coming off of the Falcon 9. So we're down to one to go. That'll be coming up in just under a minute and a half or so from now at about one hour, 12 minutes and 18 seconds. We'll come back and watch that last one separate and then wrap up the webcast. Looks like a bare dispenser, but there's actually one more Iridium satellite left on the back side of the dispenser. We're waiting for deploy confirmation. 
Spacecraft 8, separation confirmed. Final spacecraft deployed. Outstanding. That's 40 in orbit in 2018. They heard the call out, 40 in orbit in 2017. So we're 10 for 10. All 10 Iridium satellites have deployed right on time into the desired orbit. Falcon 9 looked good all the way through that sequence. So that's going to bring an end to our webcast. It says summarize events. It was an outstanding set of events this evening. We were followed along here at the webcast in Hawthorne. First stage counted down, a magnificent launch right on time in that one second window. Flew out, we had stage separation on time. For those of you who lived in Southern California, maybe as far as Arizona, Twitter has just exploded with a lot of pictures of people who saw what they call the twilight effect, the, con the contrail of the first and second stages, forming beautiful images in the sky, lit by the moon, as well as the exhaust of the Falcon engines. So a lot for the people uh, out here in Southern California to see as the Falcon 9 headed south out over the Pacific Ocean. Second stage went into a great orbit. We coasted halfway around the Earth, relit the engine, got into the desired final circular orbit, and then as you just saw over 15 minutes, deployed all 10 of the Iridium Next satellites. So that completes 2017 for SpaceX, including four flights for our Iridium customer, all the flights this year outstanding, only looking for even more in 2018. We want to thank our Iridium Next customer, of course, as well as the government agencies that supported us, the U.S. Air Force for range support out of Annenberg, and our licensing agency, the Federal Aviation Administration. We invite you to follow us on social media on both our Twitter feeds, our Instagram pages, as well as our webpage at SpaceX.com. And I'd like to thank you for letting all of us here share the mission of Falcon 9 with you. And in closing, to all of you on the good Earth, good night, good luck, happy holidays, and a happy new year.